Hey, so since the last major update of Scythe, we moved to a new apartment. And while we were packing for that move, we discovered a bunch of mold growing in our bedroom closet. And the night before we left, it rained and I discovered a new leak that was uh, leaking all over our bookshelf. So we were counting down the days to get out of that horrible place. We're in our new place now and still unpacking our last few boxes, but we're loving it so far. Uh, it's also fall now, so we've been out enjoying that and exploring the area a bit. The cats survived the move and did better than we thought they would. Uh, Rogue came out as soon as the movers were gone, and Opal came out later that night. They seem to love the huge windows and they've been doing a lot of bird watching. I've also reapplied for the Epic Mega Grant for Scythe for the third and last time. So I'll find out in December what their final decision is. So what's new in Scythe 0 0.7? Uh, the first feature that I have is texture locking. And this one's really exciting because this is something that like we, we lost from going away from the BSP, the brush style thing into static meshes. So I'm gonna lock this first. There's three new buttons here for you. I'm gonna lock this first, just to show you kind of what it looks like. This is a dynamic mesh on the left and this is a static mesh on the right. I'm making a dynamic mesh here just to show you the live updates to the UV. So it's very easy to see visually um, just for demo purposes. So when I move this here, you, you see like this is how you're used to it moving. Like this, this stretch is like that. But if we disable lock UVs on components, now when I move it, it moves the UV with it. And you might actually think, well, it's not moving anything with it. It's, it's keeping it still. Yeah, but it, it under the hood, it's moving the UV. So now you can kind of, you know, you make your, your doors or your, your walls and things and you, you need to make a slight adjustment. And now no longer do you have to completely redo all the UVs because you moved it slightly. And so here's a static mesh here, and you'll notice that even though you don't get to see it live, it, it's the same. So that's how that works. So that, that right there is um, locking the components. That's what this button is. And that's when you're manipulating the vertices, the edges, or the faces. So, you know, you can see that if I move an edge, it, it's still works properly. And then there's, this one's a little, I would say experimental. Um, let me get back to this texture here. Make this smaller. This one's a little more, you know, you won't really use this that much, but this is how it works. So right now it's, it's locked. Whoops. Right now it's, it's locked which is how you'll likely want it most of the time. But if I unlock it and then I move it in object mode, it's very important. This is an object mode thing. You'll see that the UVs stay in place, almost like a world aligned grid thing here. And uh, something to note here is it doesn't currently work on two different objects at a time. So you can only move one object at a time if you want to disable this. But most of the time you're gonna have it enabled. I'll, I'll build in multi selection stuff with this sometime. I've just, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it now with a Band-Aid solution or later when I actually have multi-selection and I'm still deciding on that. But that's that and then this one's scale, so it's as you expect when you turn that off. Now scale works. And this is the setup that is default and this is probably what you'll be running with most of the time. That is the major feature in this version. That's something super exciting that I got in. Um, I wasn't sure if I was gonna even be able to do it 
but um, you know, there it is. It's the same thing as source two hammer now. Next up is extruding edges with rotation and scale. So this used to be the only thing that was possible here, just positioning. And now let's, let's do something fun over here. Now we can extrude with rotation and we can extrude with scale. Let's do a simple scale thing here. I'm going to delete that. Select all these. Hold shift. And now you can do that. So, and another fixed thing with edge extrusion is it no longer breaks your normals when you're moving these around. So when I let go now, it calculates this normal properly. So now you don't have to keep doing or calculate normals to fix your normals every time you extrude a new edge. Something to note that even though you can move this edge and the texture lock works properly, edge extrusion still doesn't do doesn't work with texture lock yet, but that's something that I hope to do sometime. And one tiny note here is if you're doing something like this where you're going to be extruding right on the corner and you do this, you'll notice that when you're done and let's go into local space mode, this should be pointing out that way, but it's not. Um, it's because there's some kind of strange thing happening here with multiple vertices on top of each other. And I'm still working through that, but for now, the fix is to just do weld overlapping. And then now it works. And the last note about edge extrusions, because I, I fixed a lot of edge extrusion stuff. Now, you'll see that on a scaled mesh of any kind, negative or anything, before you wouldn't be able to do this. It would completely mess up the mesh, but now you can. So now you can extrude edges on a scaled mesh. And next up we have nudging. Ideally, I wanted the just the arrow keys to do nudging, but Unreal has a hold over that right now. And you know maybe I can figure out how to override that later, but for now you have to hold down Alt and hit an arrow button. So this is alt up and down and left and right. And if I hold down shift while doing this, it extrudes. And if I hold down shift and control while nudging, it'll do a push pull. The only thing is if you're pushing into something, you're going to lose your selection right now because I haven't figured out how to keep your selection because you're removing triangles here. It's, it's, it's difficult. But I hope to solve that sometime. And the other thing to note is this is screen space. So I'm, I'm looking straight on this and if I hit Alt and Up, it goes where I expect it to go. But if I'm looking straight over it and hit alt up it goes in the direction of my screen so that also means that in orthographic mode you can do the same thing and i'll should just work and a quick mention that i have changed the hotkeys for shifting the texture to numpad so before it did use alt and arrow keys, but because I had a squeeze nudging in, uh, now shifting uses numpad. And next up we have wrap texture to selection. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with wrapping a texture, which is selecting a face that you're happy with the UVs on, and then you just want it to flow over here to this face. So you would hold alt and right click, and it would do that. But you wouldn't have to want to have to click all these to make sure that they're all wrapped properly. You just want to click one 
and have them all wrapped to this face. So to do that, I'm going to select the one that I want everything to be wrapped to. And I'm going to hit Control I, or you can hit, um, where is it right here? Invert the current selection. And then I'm going to hit Alt Shift and right mouse button on this. And now they all wrapped to this. And this is something that I wanted to do in the future when I get multi selection in, multi mesh selection. Um, I want to be able to wrap this UV to this. These are two different meshes. How can I do this? Well, before you'd have to select these two and then you'd merge the meshes and then you could wrap it to that one. But now I have a little, just a little hack. So we have some way of doing this. If you select the face that you want to wrap to this, I'm going to pick up the texture with shift right click. And that, that picks up the material, but now it, it picks up extra data from this face. And now I can go over here, and as long as I don't have anything selected, I just have this mesh selected, but no face is selected. And if I do Alt, right click, now it'll match it. So you can't even tell they're two different meshes right now. So next we have some buttons here on the rotate line here. Uh, flip texture horizontal, flip texture vertical, flip face UV horizontal, and flip face UV vertical. And you might be wondering, well, what the hell is the difference between these two? Um, I'll show you with hotspots. So this is a hotspot here. I'm going to show you the texture here. This is this is what we got. So that that face there is this one here. And if I just wanted to flip this, just mirror this. I would use the flip face UV horizontal and that flipped the UV. So the UV is here. So it just flipped this around. And then if I wanted to flip the entire texture, I would use flip texture horizontal. So if I do that, you'll notice that, oh, it's, well, it's, it's weird now because it flipped the entire texture over. So now we're getting all this stuff over here. Um, I don't know what the point of this is, but maybe there's a use for it. I'm so it's there. It's you know, Source Two Hammer does it, so so do I. The work is bullshit. The work is mysterious and important. And finally, you can now set your own custom default active material. So when Scythe boots up, if you go to your project settings here, when Scythe boots up you can change this to a different material and it'll set that to the active material by default every time site boots up so you don't have to keep finding your you know your custom block app material that you want to be using so that should be it for all the big features um, if you'd like to see the full change log it's in the description below and thanks to all my patrons. If you're not a patron and you'd like to try out Scythe, that's only $10 and you get the latest build of Scythe as thanks and you can use that forever commercially. Um, so thanks guys and I'll see you later.